Hey everyone, welcome to another Biblical History on the Go. This topic is going to be on the seven seals uh, and everything that comes with it. Um, so the seven seals are essentially part of the great tribulation of uh, the, the, the world uh, during the reign of the Antichrist. Um, and typically when people hear about the book of Revelation, the first thing they go to is the seven seals and the four horsemen. Uh, this is going to cover that. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it because there's a lot of information. I don't want to really miss anything um, to keep, it, uh, keep the video under 30 minutes. So first things first. Uh, the seven seals. So the seven seals are really the first thing that that you uh, see start happening in terms of the uh, timeline uh, of the the end before the return of Jesus. Uh, the return of Jesus is the end of the seals. Uh, so the first seal that shows up talks about the rider on the white horse, a person who comes conquering and to conquer, as it as it were. Um, so this represents the Antichrist. This is something that people will agree on. It's it's kind of obvious. Uh, but I want you to think about this, not not in terms of like, oh, I could just open up the Bible and I could read this myself and figure out what it is. I want you to realize that this is not just um, a depiction of, of uh, some supernatural events. The point of these seals, the points of highlighting it here is so that people who are watching and ready uh, can be aware when things start happening. You can see what seal you're in. Um, so the first seal being about the Antichrist, if you watch the other video I made on the Antichrist, the, the Antichrist will arise uh, in power and in politics and through peace will unite the, the Middle East. Uh, and uh, as far as who that is, that's also in um, uh, another video about like who is Trump the Antichrist, you know, because a lot of people want to say he is. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. But the point is uh, that the Antichrist will be revealed for sure, for certain, where it's beyond the shadow of a doubt, uh, when the third temple uh, is established. He will sit in the temple and claim to be God, um, being idolized by the nation of Israel. Uh, and Trump right now is the closest, as he is, in fact, being idolized by the nation of Israel. Go check out that video. Um, I give you uh, information that can already be looked up in the news. That the, the nation of Israel really is idolizing Trump based on his simple decision to say Israel or Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Uh, anyways, so the Antichrist establishes himself as God. This is how we know the, this is the Antichrist in the first place. This seal is about him showing up, conquering, and to conquer. So this is, the Antichrist has arrived on the scene and he's starting his work. This doesn't mean that this is when people know that he's around. This is when he actually shows up. So this first seal could be opened right now. Um, and in fact, it probably is. Um, and then the next thing you see, the second seal, uh, is the horseman on the red uh, red horse. Uh, and he's given a great sword. And with this sword, uh, he kills people. So this is obviously war. Uh, it's a depiction of war. So there will be a great war. Again, we have to remember that you know the Bible essentially is written about and for the Israelite people. Uh, New Testament incorporates uh, the, the church of Christ, the people of God, uh, who have been... Uh, entwined with the, the people of Israel. Um, all of us who, who are now part of God's family are now included also in the struggle of Israel. Um, but the book of Revelation, all of this stuff that's happening is a direct result to Israel's disobedience to God. Look in any book that's talking about Israel's disobedience. It's probably the biggest topic in the Bible. Always talking about how Israel... Uh, as a nation has turned away from God and how they constantly, consistently reject Him, whether it's God the Father, whether it's Jesus, etc., Old Testament or New, Revelation or not, this is this is what the Bible says. This is what God says. This is about Israel. So these seals are also about Israel. So this great war that they're talking about is the war um, against Jerusalem, the war against Israel. This is where the nations, the Arab nations, uh, and other nations uh, that are enemies of Israel will surround Israel as they're already starting to do um, and they will attack Israel to destroy Israel um, but moreover this is this is again um, this is already going on but this is something that's going to uh, escalate beyond what anyone thought it could be to the point where it's essentially looking like genocide um, that's what the second seal is the, the the seal of war, um, and that's to depict the beginning of war 
in Israel. That's going to be the second thing that happens in, in the timeline. The Antichrist appears uh, as a result, though he's pedal, um, peddling peace, uh, war happens, great war happens. Um, and then we have the third seal. Uh, I had to write these down because it's a lot of information. I don't want to. I don't want to forget anything here. It's all irrelevant. The third horseman is the uh, the famine horseman. The horseman on the black horse. Uh, this is the third seal. Famine, obviously, uh, it's, needs no explanation. Food will start to become scarce. Uh, it's particularly food that has to be grown. Crops. Uh, there will be famine, great famine, not just like oh we've got a potato shortage. Uh, although, you know, depends. It, it <laughs> depends on where you are, right? Uh, but this is this is a this will be a major problem. This this particular famine, uh, and it will affect everyone in the world, um, and, and not just Israel. It will affect the entire world. This famine, but whatever those crops are, it doesn't really matter. It's the point is the world is dying. Uh, and this this seal is the uh, the proof of it. This is how you know when you see these things happening. You say, Ah, this is the third seal. Obviously, uh, we aren't there yet. Um, so the well, actually, you know what? Maybe we are. I'm not, not entirely sure. Uh, but let's look at the next seal. The fourth seal is the the ashen horse, the the pale horse. Uh, and this horseman uh, is death. And he brings Hades, which is hell. He brings hell with him. So, hell is... I don't, I don't think I did a video on this one, but, but hell basically is uh, the separation between God uh, and heaven, uh, where, where God dwells, and where we are. Uh, not, not earth. I mean, in death. The spiritual separation from God. This is what Jesus experienced when he died on the cross, but he got the keys... Uh, to, to death and Hades, symbolic. Obviously, there's no like actual key, but he he now controls death. He has death has no power over Jesus over God. Uh, he died for our sake so that we who experience death can be saved from death to be reconciled with God. Uh, so the fact that this writer death brings hell with him uh, is a depiction of the fact that through all of the death that happens, many people are separated from the love of God, uh, many people who don't believe in God are being essentially harvested to hell. Uh, harvest, I'm using that as a, uh, a visual the, the description, a visual term so you can understand. It's like the devil is killing anyone and everyone, uh, especially people who don't believe, for the sake of filling up hell with people who can't reach God. Of course, whether or not that is the case that's a matter for judgment and a matter for God himself but that's what this whole proportionment represents lots of death will be happening in the world and in fact maybe we are in the fourth seal we could be if you look at all the the, the heinous acts of, of unnecessary murder that's happening throughout the world and especially with these uh, in America with the school shootings that are happening so frequently now um, and, and it's just it's really crazy because people are just doing these things because they can um, whereas this was not a problem in the past and it's escalated sure over time you know it becomes more and more of a thing where people are are committing these crimes and right now we're kind of at a standstill and uh, Donald Trump isn't doing anything about it uh, and no, I know he's not God sent he's not heaven sent even though uh, people who prophesy online uh, who claim to be prophets and Trump himself going to churches during his campaign to have these congregations of you know Christians believe because their their leaders and pastors are saying that God sent Trump to save the Christianity in the world. You know it that's that's illegal and God doesn't need to break the law to to uh, make a point. You know uh, Trump is not God sent and um, he's, he's not really doing anything about this this terror that's kind of gripping the world not by uh, the Arab nation or other religions this is this is just death uh, and and no reason for it uh, and this is essentially what we see in the fourth seal so whether or not we're in the fourth seal uh, that that yet to be seen um, of course the Antichrist the uh, the arrival and the com confirmation of the Antichrist is the absolute proof of where you are in the spectrum um, so 
I'd say, in my opinion, uh, we could be up to the fourth seal. Uh, I haven't really noticed anything about famine. Then again, I haven't really been looking uh, for any information on on almanacs or, or how the world is doing with food. Um, so maybe someone else could look into that and see if, if that lines up. Uh, maybe in the nation of Israel, see if there's anything going on there. Uh, so then the fifth seal is opened. In the fifth seal, there's no more horsemen. This is a force for four horsemen. But this is significant because in the fifth seal, uh, you see under the altar of God, there are the people who have been martyred for their testimony of Jesus. These are people who are killed for being Christian. Uh, and they say, how long until we are avenged? And God tells them, not long. But this is the whole point of the fifth seal. Uh, this doesn't mean that it's over. Uh, because he specifically says, um, until the, the, the number of your brethren who are to be killed have been killed, then I will avenge you. Uh, this is talking about Jesus' return. God lets these things happen. And you, you might say, well, why does God let bad things happen to, to good people? Well, because he has a plan. Uh, he's The whole point of his plan is to take as many people as possible and bring them into the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> a kingdom where there is no death, where there is no sin. Uh, and people think that in this life, that that's the most important thing, is that bad things are happening to you now. But the reality is, none of this matters because of the fact that we are going to be given new bodies with our spirits, our existing spirits, and a new heaven and a new earth. That means all of your favorite places on earth are being wiped out. There will be no streets. So the earth is getting an entire cleansing, uh, and it's being reformed. It will be completely and utterly different. It's being remade, not just the earth, but all of the universe as well, remade entirely uh, for the sake of this new heaven and new earth that Jesus has been planning. The whole point, he's not here and he sent the Holy Spirit. He's been planning this for us. So that's what we really need to, to keep an eye on, uh, keep track of. Uh, so, so this fifth seal is these martyrs being pointed out because people have been killed for their faith in Christianity and continue to be killed for their faith in Christianity. Uh, in Arab in the Arab nations in uh, America, these there's there are people who hate God, uh, and there are people who hate God so much that they would seek out Christians to murder them. Uh, we see this in the church shootings that have also been up and coming, and it's and it's unnecessary, but it's a a point to to show that this is what what's happening, uh, and, and especially in this time in the the seal, this highlights these are the things that are happening. Um, and so then we go on to the sixth seal. Uh, so let's see what we got here. The sixth seal is um, probably the most the most um, easily recognizable seal uh, as far as everything that goes. It's kind of the last seal uh, in terms of events that because a whole new set of events happens for the seventh seal. But in the sixth seal, uh, there is terror. Uh, the sun turns black as sackcloth and the moon turns red like blood. Um, if you think about it, these things are very reminiscent of astronomical events. Solar eclipse turns the sun black. A lunar eclipse turns the sun red. Uh, you know, in, in recent years, we've started calling certain eclipses blood moons. Why? Does it make the moon redder than it normally is? No, not really. It's just we've started calling it that, which is ironic. Um, however, these are two events that happen and from the sound of it, it it's it's like these two events happen simultaneously uh, which is not possible if you know anything about uh, astronomy and physics the uh, the you can't have a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse at the exact same time because they both involve the same uh, uh, what was it um, astron astronomical bodies uh, and in different orientations to the sun or to the earth so it's just not possible to have a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse at the same time. You need a new moon for one, the moon disappears, you need this, yeah. So anyways, I don't think that this is necessarily a solar or lunar eclipse. Uh, I do think that this is something else that will physically happen to the sun and to the moon to cause them to be this way. Uh, not necessarily that, things are just falling into place astronomically and that's, this, is, this is what it is now. Um, it's, it's going to be a, a spiritual event. Uh, that takes that manifests uh, physically, uh, and and through this terror, there's also the world's greatest earthquake that occurs, uh, and everyone in the world 
uh, flees from this the situation, um, and people even say wish that the the mountains would fall on them because they know it's God and they want to be spared from God's wrath, and and that's where Jesus the sky opens up. Jesus is revealed. This is not his second coming, but he's revealed and he marks the uh, the, the people, the 144,000, and uh, the rest are raptured up. This is the point of the rapture, the sixth seal, um, and then. There's the seventh seal, silence in heaven. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, but it's, I assume, like the calm before a storm, right? All this major stuff has been happening. There's a uh, major earthquake that's you know, rumbling in that. has got to be absolutely insane. Uh, and then suddenly the earth is silent for 30 minutes. Uh, it says 30 minutes or half an hour. Uh, I don't know if that's in heaven time or if it's in uh, you know man's time, but it's really hard to say but the calm before the storm is essentially what it is uh in heaven what's happening is these vials uh, or the, these trumpets these angels are with trumpets are starting to uh assemble uh and in that the first tr trumpet sounds after this half an hour period uh there's hail fire and blood that's hurled to the earth uh from the skies and of course this is whether it's the composition of blood or actual blood, God himself is dishing out wrath on the world. And so you can't really put any of this past him. This is not some astronomical event that could be construed as fire and hail and blood or the composition of blood. This is, this is God himself, who is the creator of everything, bringing down vengeance on the earth. Uh, so the first trumpet signifies fire, hail, and blood, which burns up a third of all the trees and all the grass on the entire earth. Uh, so that's pretty significant. The second trumpet uh, is uh, a mountain ablaze. This is basically a meteorite, a giant meteorite from space that looks like a mountain, a meteor, uh, enters the atmosphere and will crash into the earth. Uh, and obviously that causes a great death devastation. Uh, it crashes into the sea, specifically. Uh, so it'll cause great devastation in general, uh, but it's going to kill a third of all sea life, and a third of all of the ships in the world are destroyed by this meteorite, like a mountain that crashes into the sea. Naturally, tsunamis and everything that comes with a meteorite strike of that proportion. The third trumpet sounds. Uh, a star comes from the heavens. Nothing looks like a star in astronomy except for a comet. Uh, from far enough away, it looks like a star. Closer, it looks like um, still a star, but with the tails. If you know anything about that, with the ion uh, from the sun evaporating the, the comet. So this comet crashes into, into the Earth and hits the rivers. And so a third of the waters of the Earth are made what's called wormwood. Um, and this is also a, it's a scientific term. Um, but basically the waters are made bitter. Like, you know how you can't drink uh, seawater because, you know, you'll die. It's, it's not, it's not going to sustain you. This is what happens to the waters uh, as a result of wormwood, this comet that crashes into the earth. So we have a, a meteorite that's fallen from earth and crashed into the earth, destroyed a third of the plant life. We have a comet that has come and crashed into the earth and destroyed a third of the waters so that people who try to drink from these waters die from it. A third of the people die from this. Um, and then the next, um, the next trumpet is the sun and the moon are struck. Struck. Physically struck. And a third of their light is, is uh, darkened. So that a third of the day is without um, light and a third of the night is without light. Now, this is essentially depicting what astronomy has uh, hypothesized as a heavy bombardment period, something that scientists think happened uh, in the beginning of the creation of our solar system. Comets, or not comets, um, yeah, comets and, um, and particles and space rock just flying around as the Earth starts terraforming. Uh, and so we constantly get bombarded by objects flying through space until those objects can clear their own, um, their own, uh, their own path. And once they've cleared that path, uh, then the likelihood of getting struck by something else because gravitational pull has gathered everything else up uh, it, it becomes unlikely. This is essentially a second heavy bombardment period. One of the things that we learned from NASA or, uh, was that the uh, Andromeda galaxy is on a collision course with our galaxy. It's the nearest galaxy to us um, and it's on a collision course. 
the scientists tell us that it's uh, about 5 billion years away from actually causing a, a heavy bombardment period. However, based on what the Bible says, this heavy bombardment period appears to be happening way sooner than people expect. And maybe science has lied to us because we just don't know how we would avoid a heavy bombardment period on a galactic level when we haven't even gotten to our next star. Uh, so certainly there's something to that there that the Bible would be depicting a heavy bombardment period well before anyone understood or even knew to say the words heavy bombardment in reference to the creation of, of uh, or the movement of celestial bodies. So that's essentially what's happening here. Um, the, the next thing that we see that happens is the sixth seal. The sixth seal refers to, oh wait, no, my bad. Uh, so, oh, I actually dropped a piece here. Trumpets, right? We're on trumpets. So, third trumpet, fourth trumpet. So, the, and where is it? First trumpet, second trumpet was the, uh, uh, yep, third trumpet was that. Uh, fourth trumpet, what was the fourth trumpet? Um, drop my paper, give me a second. So while well, I'm waiting to do that, so this 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 heavy bombardment period is, is pretty significant and worth considering. Um, it's a problem, right? Uh, the next trumpet, the, for the fourth trumpet, is um, more destruction to come. Uh, the fifth trumpet, we see something happening here. The bottomless pit is opened. Uh, so the bottomless pit refers to. Um, I'm not sure if it's hell or, um, but basically on earth there is a pit. In this pit, there are locusts. In, in these locusts, I'm pretty sure are the same locusts that plagued the nation of Egypt during the time of the Exodus. Uh, these locusts are um, depicted as like kind of chimeras uh, where they have scorpion tails and faces like women and hair like women uh, or faces like men, hair like women, uh, teeth like lions. They're, they're really kind of hellish creatures right um and the the sphinx actually if you look at the description of the bible uh in revelation of these locusts and you look at the sphinx it is ironic that the sphinx looks exactly like these locusts um and i don't think that's coincidence and in fact the, the mystery of the sphinx i would i would greatly put my, like any amount of money on it that the sphinx is a part of the period of the exodus uh, it was created in in memory of what happened uh, to the Israelite people, or to the yeah to the Israelite people and to the Egyptian people, um, and the the removal of those plagues as a result of the Israelites leaving. Uh, and I would bet anything on it because a star, uh, as Revelation puts it, a star comes down and opens this bottomless pit. I'm assuming that means the star the star. Uh, another comet comes, crashes into the location where those locusts were buried, uh, where they went into the ground and, and were subsequently covered up. Pretty sure that's the Sphinx. Conspiracy theory? Sure. Uh, but what isn't a conspiracy theory is the fact that the depiction of the uh, locust and the depiction of the Sphinx in all of its Egyptian drawings uh, are, are identical. Uh, and I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, so... Yeah, so the fourth seal, uh, the fourth trumpet was the sun and the moon were, were covered up. The fifth trumpet is those the, the locusts coming back. Um, this is also the start of what's called the three woes. Woes on the earth. And basically, they're, they're the plagues. Um, because, of course, the people of the earth still have, haven't repented. Uh, so the sixth, fifth seal is the, uh, the locusts and the sun's blotted out by the smoke that comes from the ground when it's... Uh, the bottomless pit is open, so I'm assuming this is uh, hell uh, or the lake of fire. Um, kind of, I don't know, I don't know, but there's uh, bottomless pits open up. This is where locusts live, and they come out of the ground. I'm pretty sure that's in Egypt. Uh, so the sixth seal, there's four angels that have been locked up, apparently, in the river Euphrates uh, for this specific day. And these, these angels are released, uh, and they also go and kill a third of the people who are remaining alive, 
by plagues, fire, uh, smoke, and brimstone. Uh, so again, lots of death during this time. And the whole purpose of this is so that people realize you can't fight against God. He controls life. He controls death. Uh, and of course, the ultimate end of all things is the resurrection of every single human being and the judgment of all those and the spirit of those people um, are either sent to hell away from the presence of God forever uh, because we live forever we are spirits with a body not a body with a spirit or we live forever with God and we get new bodies for our spirits um, and what that's for nobody knows what that's like nobody knows doesn't really matter um, and then there's the seventh seal so at this point the seventh seal represents the end of all these woes. That last one there, that last third of people who are killed, uh, this is this is the end of all the, the Antichrist. Um, Jesus shows up. That is the seventh seal. Uh, it says the kingdom of the Lord, or the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of the Lord. Uh, this is where Jesus comes back, the second coming. The sky opens up. Jesus, with 10,000 of his saints, his armies, comes down. They fight. Ironically, they are... are Interestingly enough, they fight physically with the world. The people who are left are still putting up arms to physically fight against the God who created the universe. This is how crazy it is at this point in time. These people think that they can fight, physically fight God who spoke the earth, the universe into existence. They think they can fight him. Uh, and of course they lose. In one single day, everyone who, who steps against God loses and he establishes the millennial kingdom which is another video that i have described um so that's basically it with the with those seven seals uh but there's also actually uh there's vials there's vials that are included uh in the seventh seventh or seventh trumpet after the trumpet sounded there's there's more woes on the earth uh, on the people who who try to fight against god um and vials are opened up against them uh, during the millennial kingdom uh, so the people who have chosen to be against God uh, even though they've lost the war uh, have to deal with this stuff uh, like the sun essentially expanding and causing extreme heat on the earth uh, and there's weeping and gnashing of teeth they, they're really just unbearable unlivable conditions for the earth except for the nation of Israel where Jesus has established his kingdom um, and that's really all there is to the to the seven seals. Uh, it's just a whole lot of doom and gloom um, for the people who have not been saved, for the people who are not raptured on the earth uh, into heaven. Uh, it's it's all of the troubles that they will endure, uh, and specifically all of the troubles that the nation of Israel will, will endure with the rest of the world for having abandoned God, for having abandoned Jesus, until they realize he has he we've we murdered him we crucified our god and turned our back away from him and when they realize that at the end of the sixth seal that's when they turn back to jesus um and he returns so if you like this information if you like the video like subscribe share more than anything talk to people about it especially christians because uh, they're probably going to be the most interested about this stuff and it's not taught in churches even though it should that's the whole point of the reformation people aren't talking about the, the things left behind by God, by Jesus. He commanded us watch and be ready. And for whatever reason, the church does not do that. We ignore these books as if we don't need to worry about it. It's never going to happen to us in our lifetimes. And it will happen to someone. And I believe it will happen in our lifetimes. If we look at anything going on in the world, it certainly looks that way. So at the very least, we shouldn't be uh, complacent and, and pretend that God will uh, forgive us for not caring about the things that he said because he certainly does care. Um, so like, subscribe, share, talk to people about it. Uh, and the next video will probably cover something else and time related until we're done with that. Um, and that's it. That's it for today. Have a good one.